Hey there riders, Moto Journo Chris here today and I wanted to talk really the five things that I hate most about my Spark Pillin 401 and the five things which probably impressed me the most after coming up on close to a year of ownership. And while I haven't done the kilometers I would have liked on the Spark Pillin 401, there's certainly no regrets about buying the bike as a whole. However, there are a couple of features which do stand out to me as being areas that uh, I'm just not so enamored with. So let's have a look at them. So number one on the list is just the rack on that tank. I kind of like the concept and it does clean up the top of the tank because there are some actual seams in between the different parts of the bodywork. However, realistically speaking, it's kind of like a cheap unsealed plastic, which is a bit blotchy uh, where it's been casted. And I'm kind of disappointed there's not an affordable bag option that just clips right on and is just an awesome solution for that because I think that would actually help quite a lot. And I will say the Husqvarna accessories are quite expensive. So one of the reasons I really haven't bought any of their stuff is just because it's so pricey. Now this one's gonna be something that people either love or hate. I'm just not a fan of these swing arm mounted vendors and license plate holders. And I do have my license plate just hidden there at the moment. But as you can see, it's got this big kind of mud guard, which actually the mud guard, very, very necessary because a little mud guard like this one does almost nothing. Uh, so that does help a lot and obviously helps somewhat with visibility and stuff like that but you've got a really kind of hefty big piece of aluminium off the swing arm there which weighs a ton which I'm not so happy with and I'd really ideally like to put a little tail tidy on. Okay so while we're down here in kind of the more mechanical section of the bike there's two things I want to talk about. The first of which is that while I've been doing stuff on the bike I've actually noticed that some of the bolts are I guess I would say on the lower quality end of things. I've got metric and imperial tools and I've never really had a problem with my tools. They're not the most expensive, but they're certainly not like the super cheap stuff either. Uh, but a lot of the bolts, I just can't seem to get a proper fitting tool onto them, which to me means that maybe those bolts are a bit on the cheap side of things. And certainly also some of them have really been uh, quite a soft bolt, which again is not ideal because when you don't have a great fit and you've got like a softer or cheaper bolt, it's much, much easier to damage the bolt. But I would definitely think about replacing those with a higher quality bolt for long-term ownership. The other kind of bigger issue, which is my main gripe with this bike, and it's quite a small gripe, realistically speaking, but at the same time, it's something that I don't really think is acceptable on a bike in 2023. It, it leaks oil. So it leaks a very, very small amount of oil from the sump drainage bolt and that's why I don't have the sump protector on at the moment. There's a stock one that comes with it. It was collecting the oil and then it was kind of draining down onto the exhaust and dropping under the bike. And while I can just wipe up the excess oil, it's maybe five or six drops a week, I would guess, based on kind of what I've been looking, which mainly seems to be a problem. You heat the bike up, obviously the oil viscosity get very viscous and that's when it seems to leak. And as a result of that, yeah, it, it, it just has this very, very slow leak. And so that is a little bit disappointing. And I know a lot of people joke about Husqvarna's leaking oil. And so it does seem that I am a victim of that issue. On the bright side, my bike hasn't had the stalling issue that my sister's 390 Adventure has had yet. So let's hope this is the only issue that I really have to deal with on that kind of side of things as far as reliability. It is not a major issue, but it is annoying. Okay, so the final of the hates list is the dash. Now, this is something that I actually said I didn't mind. And to be honest, I don't mind the functionality of the display of the dash. I think while the way they've kind of implemented it is not the best and it really could do with some kind of like really nice surround just to bring it all together, uh, the, the visibility of the dash is generally really, really good and the information on display is really good. What I've actually discovered is since I've started polishing the bike, the reflections off the dash are a real problem. And I think it is probably the simple fact that the polish I'm using is giving it a real sheen and the wrong angle of sun causes issues and I can't really see the dash. The secondary thing which annoys me about the dash is if I've got gloves on, it is very, very hard to use those buttons. If I don't have gloves on, it's not that bad. You can kind of feel the engagement, but because it's quite a subtle feel, uh, certainly it's quite hard to use those in 
regular riding conditions when you've got your gloves on. So let's move on to the stuff that I really love about the bike and probably number one on the list is still those spoked wheels. They stand out. The spoked wheels are still a little bit of a more unusual kind of feature. Obviously this is somewhat in that dual sport kind of theme in that it's, I mean, it's not really a dual sport, but having the adventure orientated tires on does certainly push it into that, that different category where you'd expect the spoked wheels a little bit more. However, with that being said, uh, it's still much less usual to see a pair of spoked wheels on a bike and at this price range as well, because these are a really affordable machine, getting those spoked wheels and they're pretty nice looking spoked wheels as well to me is a real standout feature and really a great buying point of the bike that I still love to this day. Now the other thing that I really do appreciate on the bike is this cool bodywork. The way it's not a single piece, it looks really, really cool. I like the design of that kind of feature on the bike. I like how they've tried to flow everything together. And while, as I've just said, there are a couple of things that stand out to me on the styling side of things that I don't like so much, like that rack and the, uh, the license plate holder off the swing arm. I think otherwise the looks of the bike is really, really nice. It stands out, it's unusual, it's got a bit of character. I just think it's a little bit unusual and it works to my eye, at least it works really, really well. So what else do we have? We've also got this really good seat. Uh, looking at it, I think it'd be easy to think, well, it's not gonna be very comfortable. It's quite a minimalistic seat. It's uh, quite narrow right there at the front. And while it does get a little bit deeper towards the rear, it's still a very like enduro styled seat. However, the seat on this bike is super comfortable. I actually find it really, really good. Longer rides, really the seat comfort is never an issue. Where on something like my Ninja 400, the seat is quite uncomfortable. It's a real point of note where upgrading the seat is something I probably should have done years ago. Okay, so one of the really big features that I really love on this motorcycle is those adjustable forks. Now, I will say that if a set of forks are just set up really well for my weight, 70, 75 kilos, is quite normal for a lot of these smaller capacity bikes. I think I often fall into kind of the window of what the bikes are designed for. I'm, I'm quite happy with no adjustability. However, the reason I really like the adjustability on the Spark Pillin 401 is with those dual purpose tires, if I go down a fire trail, the front forks really do get overwhelmed over the bigger bumps. Like if you don't avoid some of those bigger bumps, you will bottom out those forks. However, I just chuck on a couple of clicks of compression and it's basically problem solved. So that little bit of adjustability in those front forks does give the dual purpose kind of character of the bike a lot more viability. If I didn't have it, I'd be quite disappointed with the Spark Pillin 401 for the off-roading, or if it was set up more for the off-roading, it'd be vice versa. So I, I really do think that that's a great little boon. And the other thing that I actually think is really, really cool, but it's such a small little feature, but something that I really love on the bike, which we're seeing a little bit more now, is that these switch blocks are backlit. So the little, kind of the little details on them that tell you the different settings or what the switches do, they light up when the bike is on. And again, that's probably something quite silly to a lot of people's minds, but just that little detail is something that really stands out to me. So that's my loves and hates on the Spark Pill and 401. There's a couple of little niggling things that wouldn't stop me buying the bike by any means. However, I do think that that oil leak is something that probably we shouldn't be seeing on a modern bike, but depending who you talk to, some people do say that's quite common on certain brands of bikes. So. Anyway, let me know what you think. What are your favorite features of the Spark Pillin 401 and what do you hate about it? Let me know down below in the comments. If you're still here, hit the like button and stay safe out there.